Good morning. Hey there. Happy Friday. This is so exciting. I love Fridays and I love our live video days because it's so much fun to talk to all of you. Today's topic was actually way more popular than I thought it would be. And we put out a call to all introverts of how to sell your products when you're not necessarily a people person. And for you guys being a bunch of introverts, we got all kinds of crazy extroverted comments. So <laughs> I mean that in a really good way. It's like, wow, there's a whole bunch of you. Um, so thank you for being here today and feel free to ask questions anytime. If it's not live and you're watching this, we'll come back and talk to you later too. And uh, I want to start with the definition of introvert and extrovert because it's, I think it's a little bit different than what most people think. Uh, and an introvert, well, let's start with an extrovert. An extrovert is someone who gains energy from talking to groups or individuals. So when they're done, it's very exciting for them and they aren't exhausted. They, they're energized. And an introvert is exhausted by talking with people or groups or whatever. And the thought of that terrifies them or exhausts them. And then when they're done, they're all worn out. And many people think that an introvert is someone who has a hard time talking about what they have to sell or selling their products or getting on stage or talking to groups and an extrovert that comes easy to them. So that's what most people think. But actually, I, if you hold that belief, we're gonna start with limiting beliefs. So we all have these beliefs in our head that limit our actions. Because we believe this, we never try that. So if you believe you're an introvert to start with, it means you will always kind of limit your options or your behavior or something when it is time to sell. But if you stop and recognize that everybody is an extrovert in some areas and introverted in other areas, you will then start to recognize that it's not a black and white belief. It's not like you were born an introvert or born an extrovert. It's something that you can grow and change and maybe you uh, help out in your kid's classroom and you stand up in front of the kids and you uh, ha it's very simple and easy and energizing for you to present whatever it is you're talking about that day. But then you go to the farmer's market and you're exhausted. So you have extroverted skills, you know, <laughs> in one setting and introverted skills in another setting. So once you recognize that, that it's actually a muscle that you can build it then it opens you up to recognizing that okay i'm not uh it's not black and white i'm not just labeled myself an introvert introvert and that's how i'm going to be the rest of my life it would be like um uh sign if if i'm not working out at all and then i sign out to run, sign up to run a marathon next week i'm going to fail at that marathon however if i sign up to run a marathon a year from now and I have a one year training plan, I am going to have a, and I stick to the training plan, I'm gonna have a really good chance of being successful at that marathon. Same thing with trying to sell your products wherever you are. If you're on your farm or at the market or at your store or making deliveries, if you start now and you have a plan of what to do you can grow that muscle and and exercise that capability and a year from now or five years from now you will be so much better at that and i'm you know personally i have people that say oh i can't just i can't do what you do charlotte you're such an extrovert it comes so easy for you we could all say that about somebody i'm classic introvert and yet um, and if I look at my videos I started doing five years ago, oh my gosh, they're so terrible and I'm shaky and nervous and all that, but I've gotten better with practice and I have a long ways to go. And so all of us have examples in our life where we were not good at talking with a person or a group of people at one time and we got better. So that's what we're going to do with your um, farm marketing. And so there is this fear or whatever it is that's that's making you exhausted um, and sometimes it's it's a valid fear sometimes like one of our students she sent me a private message where she described her feelings and how she felt when she talked to her first customer and she forgot to say this and this and this and she forgot 
everything she learned in class she forgot, except maybe one thing, but she said, I got through it, and now I can't wait for the next time, because next time, instead of forgetting five things, she's only going to forget four things, and she's going to get better and better and better. So when you set those little goals and you recognize that you might fail and it's okay to fail because um, we, we can't go out the gate and be totally successful the very first time. We're going to choke up and forget things. Um, so there, then let's get to a few things that will, a couple things especially that will help you be more successful. So. Uh, because you have to practice this muscle, you know, you have to develop this muscle. So what are you going to do to do that? Well, the first thing is I would love for you at first. I said, I want you to do this the next 30 days. And my husband, who is a mental health counselor said, no, you can't make him do this for 30 days. You need to just have them do it for seven days. So luckily he stepped in. And what I'm going to recommend is for the next seven days, you make it a point every single day that you're going to wake up and at some point during the day, you're going to give a compliment to a stranger. Um, and Hayden's going to post something in here a week from now so you can report back and tell us how it worked for you. But what that does is a few things. It gives you a little success, immediate gratification. You're going outside yourself to, and it could be you're in the grocery store line. Have you ever been in the grocery store line? And this poor lady is at least in our store, she's just checking all these people out. She's exhausted. There's kids like hanging all over the stuff. And have you ever done something like say, what pretty earrings or I love your shirt. And you just watch this tired woman who's exhausted. She just lights up. She's like, oh my gosh, thank you. I can't believe that's very nice of you. And she's flustered. She felt so good. So I, every time I do that, I realize that I don't do that often enough. I don't give perfect strangers compliments often enough. And when you do that, it gives you that gratification of seeing how you lit up somebody else's life for that moment. And probably then they turned around and were nicer to somebody else because of what you did. Now, if you're going to say, okay, well, I don't leave the farm most of the time, then I want you to wake up on those days you aren't coming across people out in public and I want you to send an email to someone and someone that you haven't talked to for a while perhaps and I want you just to wake up and and you know know you're not leaving the house so you go in and you think of a friend you haven't talked to in a couple years and you just send them an email and say hey Julie I haven't talked to you in forever and today I woke up thinking about you and I hope we can connect soon. I know our lives are busy, but I'd love to catch up someday. Just, you know, I hope you're having a wonderful day. It's so great seeing pictures of your children or your puppies or whatever on Facebook. Just wanted to let you know I was thinking of you. Bye-bye. Oh, um, Angie says she has no sound. I think everyone else is hearing Angie because um, they're uh, commenting or um, giving me little likes and stuff. So I think people are hearing so um, check, check your equipment. So it gives you, when you spend the next seven days looking for someone to give a compliment, it gives you instant feedback. The other thing, I want to give you this analogy of what this does. So imagine that your focus, um, you have a flashlight. And a flashlight has a beam of light going out. And some of you in our course have heard this before, but that beam of light can go one direction. You know, when you shine that beam of light, it doesn't bend. So if you shine that beam of light on yourself, that's when you are saying, oh, I can't do this. The market's exhausting. I'm all tongue tied. I can't remember what to say. I forget to ask them if they want to buy more things. You're shining the light on yourself and all your shortcomings and failures and fears. But imagine since you can only shine that light one direction, you're shining that light on the other person, which is your customer, or in this case, the person you give the compliment to every day for a week. So when you shine your light on them, you're thinking, how can I make them feel better? Instead of wallowing in your fear that we all have, I'm not just saying you, we all have this fear, but we can choose to let that control us or we can shine our light because that light can only go one direction. So it can't shine it on me and my fear and making my customer feel good at the same time. 
So when you make an intention every day to give someone a compliment that you don't know, you're shining your light on them. And this trains you then. It trains you every day. Hopefully you do this for seven days. You get some good feedback and you do it for seven more days and seven more until it becomes a way of life. And then, um, because when we're talking to our customers, we are not actually supposed to, you know, what I teach in my course is you aren't talking about your things that you have to sell. You're talking about them. They walk up to your farmer's market booth and you say, oh, what a cute bag. I love it. Or your child is so well-mannered or what a beautiful dog, whatever it is. You're complimenting them. You aren't going on to this spiel about your GMO-free eggs that have dark gold yolks, and that means there's uh, conjugated linoleic acid in them. They don't care about that. You shine your light on them, and you make them feel good. And I want to point out here that uh, um, we have three ladies who work in our farm store, and when I hire them to work in the farm store, I tell them that their job is not to sell. They are not there to sell anything. They're there to make everybody who walks through that door feel good about themselves and feel good about being there. And, oops, sorry, there's something. Okay. When you make people feel good about walking up to you and um, being in your store or at your market booth or whatever, they will buy from you. All right? So, it's not like how much of a spiel can I get out of my mouth about my pastured chickens. It's about how good can I make them feel? And they will just look around and want to buy from you. And they will come back time and time again. So, again, our job, you know, my and farm store ladies that, that sell in the farm store is not to sell, but to make everyone who walks through that door feel good. So when you come from it, at it from that standpoint, it makes you feel better about, you know, you're not wallowing in um, the, the fears you might have. So that's, that's exercise number one is for seven days, give a stranger a compliment so you could learn to focus outward instead of on yourself. And number two, when you feel fear, um, I believe, I believe in God, number one. Or I believe, or, or maybe you call it God, or maybe you call it a power or the universe sending you a message or whatever. We, I, if you're in this Facebook group, I'm sure that you believe in a higher power because we all share beliefs in here. And, and if that turns you off, you wouldn't probably want to be in this Facebook group. So I believe in God. I believe in a higher power. And I believe that every feeling I have, there's a positive intention behind it. So if I stop, so this is a technique that I use with myself or when I'm coaching other people. If I stop and say, wow, I'm feeling like I'm going to puke and I'm about to set, click send on this email and blog post and I feel sick, God, through making me feel sick, what, what is it that you want for me that's positive? So you're asking yourself this. You're saying, through feeling all nervous about going to the farmer's market today, God or universe, what do you want for me that's positive? And then when you just sit there and you feel or sense the answer, it transforms your being. It, 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 it's, and then you thank God for that or thank the universe. Oh, thank you. So for me, I had this experience last weekend. Um, I went to San Diego to talk to the, a women's conference. And I spoke to the women's conference, I did the training, and then they, I did the keynote on Sunday, and they said, by the way, in addition to the 50 women, we've inv invited the board members and the commodity growers, which were all these older men from the Midwest, you know, and in my vision, this is what they were, wearing cowboy hats, and they were sitting in the audience. And all of a sudden, what I envisioned my, giving my talk to this lovely group of women who we get along so well was filled with also all these men that were, you know, they believe in GMOs and all that. They support GMOs. A lot of different beliefs in me. And I was scared to death to go on stage. I was just like, oh my gosh, I did not expect to be speaking to a bunch of commodity growers that grow things that I don't even believe in, but I have to, you know, they flew me down here. I have to do this. And I took a moment and I did that very thing. I was like, okay, God, I'm here. You're giving me this feel. I feel terrified. I feel like I'm going to get sick what is it you want for me that's positive? 
And I just sit there and all these things come to me of, well, you're afraid you're going to look like a stupid girl. And I think, okay, that's right. And you're afraid that you'll be uh, walked over by all these men and their questions. Yep. So I had all these fears and I was like, thank you for that. And once I acknowledged that I had these fears, I was able to go out and do it anyway. And still, it's okay. Your fear of rejection, well, what's the worst thing that can happen? You know, you kind of have these conversations in your head and you carry it out to the worst case scenario. Okay, I'm rejected. Nobody buys from me today at the farmer's market. I pack my stuff up. I go home. I obsess over it for two days. And then I try again next week. So you have to have some sort of you know, mental strategy or something in place to train yourself to acknowledge these scary feelings that you're feeling and accept that they're there for a good reason. You know, thousands of years ago, it would have, the scary feeling was there's a tiger in my cave and I'm scared for my life. Well, our body, even though we don't have tigers in our caves today, our body has the same physical response as if it to fear, you know, as if it were like a tiger, a lion in your house. So know that you're, it's, it's there to protect you and you acknowledge it, you thank it and you go on. Okay. And then, um, okay. I'm just reading the question here. Good. Julie, it's making sense to her. So there I gave you three things. First of all, it's a belief. Don't get stuck in the belief that you are an introvert and therefore you will not change and it'll always be difficult because it's like a muscle for you. The more you practice it, the better you will get and you will appear to be extroverted over the years, even though you're probably still an introvert like me. Number two was the give someone a stranger a compliment every day. Number three is ask, what does the universe or God want for you by feeling those feelings you have? And then I wanted to go over a whole bunch of questions that we had here too. So a lot of people commented how exhausting it is. And it is exhausting. It's exhausting. I, I collapse after I talk to 200 people. It's really exhausting for me emotionally, mentally, all that. So, and, and um, one lady said one day at the market means it takes her a week to recover. So the thing is, you just have to acknowledge that that's how it is. And the more you exercise that muscle, um, the, the shorter that recovery time will be. And you schedule those recovery times in. So like Hayden works Saturdays in our farm store and it's the busiest day and she can be talking for four hours straight, helping people answering questions and, uh, you know, being really sounding smart and all that and intelligent and it exhausts her. And she has to, she knows that when she closes the store on Saturdays, she can't be around people for a while. She has to go, she's told me she goes for a long walk in the park to, to calm down and, and do all that for like an hour or whatever it is. So she knows she has to do that. And um, someone else said when they come from home from market and their husband greets them, they say, I just need some quiet time. So you know it's going to take a lot out of you. So plan for taking your bath or taking your um, walk in nature or whatever it is that revives you. Schedule that in um, when, when you have your market days. Because if you don't honor that about yourself, you will continue to be really afraid of you know, trying to be an extrovert. And it's not so much uh, that fear, but it's more that your body knows you're not taking care of yourself. So honor yourself that you need extra care when you have conversations with customers. Um, the other thing a couple people said is convincing people to buy my healthy eggs. Um, and, and people were saying convincing someone of the health benefits of my food. So I wanted to point out that when this is what we teach in our course we spend five weeks coaching our students on it's not about you convincing anyone of anything it is about making your customer feel good and answering their questions because they they didn't come there to hear about how your chickens are moved to fresh grass every day and you feed this gmo free feed with 27 ingredients and you drive two hours to get it and you hand deliver the feed to your chickens 
they don't care about that. That falls under the category of things us farmers wished our customers want, wanted to know versus what our customers really want. What our customers really want is typically something like, I'm really busy and my kids are going to three soccer games a week or a day and I can't get healthy dinner on the table. How do you cook a chicken? That's what your customer wants to know. But when you're standing there talking about the health benefits of your food, you're not listening to what they want to know. Someone in here mentioned they get interrupted all the time. Well, that's why. It's because you're talking about what things that, and we all are guilty of this, you're talking about things you wish your customer wanted to know instead of what your customer wants to, really wants to know. So if you find you're getting interrupted or if you find people are listening and then walking away, you're not picking up on their nonverbal cues that they, they don't want to listen to you. That's not what they're interested in. So again, you've got to shine that light on your customer, not on you. They don't care typically how the animal was raised. Shine the light on them and figure out what are they standing there telling you that they want to know? And it's always, almost always very different than what we think we should be doing. So if you find you're at the market and you have to yell at people to get attention, you know, you'll probably turn people off that way. Instead, reach out to them and uh, make them feel good about being there. So Lori says, the disconnect between what we want our customers to know and what they really want to know was such a huge aha for me. Thanks for sharing that. It is, and it's something that um, we coach people through, and some people get it right away, but most, it takes a few weeks, and then they finally realize that, oh, they don't, I don't need to keep pounding down, you know, how good grass-fed beef is for the universe or whatever. Shine the light on your customers. So we will, we will keep encouraging you to do that. And when you do that, it's less energy-sucking than... Um, just standing there and trying to sell your products, okay? When you're shining your light on other people and you're making them feel good and you're listening to them and you're reading their nonverbal cues, uh, then you're helping them and that is often more energizing. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, so, hey, I can't see all the comments on my phone. Um, oh, Okay, actually, yeah, I don't see them. Um, well, I can't see, maybe I'm not seeing, I was asked to talk about locally grown. We learn to work with how we are wired instead of working against it. Yes, Emily, so true. Um, work, if, if you're naturally more introverted, then you recognize that, you honor it, and you do these things I'm talking about in here today, and you will over, you will go really far in, in stretching that muscle. Um, and then Melissa Thatcher, well, some customers want to talk about the health benefits, and I love finding those people at the market who are as excited about healthy food as I am, but not most, that's true, yeah. So listen to your customers, and I have a lot of blog posts on how to email your customers and find out what they want to know, because it's usually not what you want them to know. So come to this Facebook group and talk about the things farmers want each other to know. Brag about how you rotate your animals or do this or that. Your customers, uh, as a rule, mostly aren't interested in that. They want you to make them feel good, and then they'll buy, you know, and, and acknowledge their challenges and their problems. Um, I also want to... Uh, um, point out one person on there commented, Suzanne Stover, how exhausting it is for her. And I know Suzanne, and she's a student, and also she's been to our farm, she's close. Suzanne has two small children, and one's a baby. I think they're both in diapers. She's working off the farm and working on the farm. And so the energy, she says, is just, it drains her so much, and it leaves her with a massive knot in my stomach after a few hours of talking about our products. And this is a case where, Suzanne, you have really have to honor that you're at a place in your life, you're at a phase where you have a lot of demands on you already. So, you know, two babies and an off-farm job is sucking everything out of you. And then you have to go talk to people. So um, I know it's hard to see when you're, because when I was a mom of two young children, I thought my life would be that busy and crazy for the rest of my life. But know that it's it's a stage of life you're in and so you've got to give yourself some grace and you've got to really build in some 
some time around all the things that are already sucking it out of you so that when you go talk to people, it, you know it's draining. So you have to build in those, that self-care around that. And also, Suzanne, just give yourself permission to know that you've got two small kids that have to come first. You've got an off-farm job. And you also go on to say you've utilized videos to, to give people information on your website instead of doing so much of it in person. And that's a great idea. We, I got to a point where I was having people call three or four or five times a week for farm tours. And when I first started, I thought I had to do that. So I was giving so many farm tours and sucking out all my time and energy. So I scheduled one tour a month. We charge for that tour. We charge money. And I can, and if anyone calls and says, I'm in town for two days, can I have a farm tour? I say, I'm sorry, it's scheduled for June 20th and if you're gone you know that that's our farm tour day and it really helped me take all that things that were sucking the energy out of me and put it on one day there so when you can find ways to set boundaries and shorten up the the time where all the you have all these demands on you it'll make it a lot um, you able to better manage it too um and then Okay, so here is another person said, the biggest issue for me is getting people to listen to me out the, about the benefits of goat meat. So that's another thing that people are, you know, if, if you can't get people to listen to you about the benefits of goat meat, they don't want to know the benefits of goat meat. So pick up on these cues from your customers that if you engage with them and you focus and ask them about why it is they want, you know, what are they using your products for, what is it your products do for them and focus on them instead of you, uh, you won't have a problem selling your products. So when you're struggling because you're saying this and you feel like nobody's listening, it's because they don't want to listen. So don't, you can't force them to listen. They want to talk about other things. Um, and then one person here, Jed, said, my biggest issue has been when several customers arrive at once and the one you're working with right now, there's another person asking questions over the top. I need to interact with this person, but I need to acknowledge the others. I'm really bad at it. Well, that's hard for anyone. And, you know, unfortunately at the farmer's market, it seems like it either, you know, there's nobody there or then there's five people at your booth at once. So yeah, yeah. Even at our farm store, it does the same thing. And that just takes practice. Some phrases I wanted to give you, um, though, <coughs> excuse me, I did have a couple of phrases for that. And one is if someone is taking your time and you need to go help another customer, you have to have nonverbal language, like pulling away and saying, this conversation warrants more time than I have now. Would you mind emailing me later and we can continue? I have to help these people and then move on. So your body language has to finish up with these people and then go over here and they will get the message. And the other thing is it's totally, and Hayden's gotten really good at this about just being very saying, I'd love to talk to you and I have to help these people now. So if you have more questions, feel free to send me an email. And someone said else said they get caught up by people who they know are not going to buy, but they keep asking them questions. Again, that is a boundary, um, something you need to learn to have really clear boundaries. When you know someone's asking questions and they're never going to buy, and you've got two people over here that could potentially buy, just wrap this up. You know, I'd, I'd really love to have this conversation. I don't have time now, so let's pick it up later. I've got to help these people. Be, and again, that takes practice too. It takes uh, getting exhausted and realizing you're going to make yourself sick if you don't do something about it so that you learn to have build those boundaries. Um, and then let me see if there's anything else in here. Any other questions anyone has? Um, okay, so one person did mention, I don't, um, the, uh, the trolls online and, and people um, uh, saying, saying things about her, calling her, let's see, what did she say? The, the tire kickers and the people who belittle her for being a woman. I would say you need to look at where you're spending your time because um, there's probably a better place for you to be where you will be better accepted because I don't get people online belittling or 
or in our store anywhere. People don't belittle me for being a woman and I don't have trolls. Maybe once a year does someone say a negative comment and I delete it. So use the delete button with liberty. Use it a lot. Protect yourself. But if you're having that much of a problem of people commenting negative comments and belittling you, I'd say that you're in the wrong place. You're Maybe you're in a Facebook group that you, you know, it's, it's not your place to be. So find a place where that's not happening because in general for farmers, that's, that's not a problem. And if you're around people belittling you for being a woman, ah, sur surround yourself with people who don't do that. So again, that comes back to, to boundaries. Find a place that celebrates you and wants to, and, and recognizes you for who you are. Um, and that's easy to find on, I mean, I don't mean to say nonchalant, oh, that's easy to do, but don't tolerate a situation where you've got trolls and bad comments and people belittling you for being a woman. Walk away from that wherever it might be and, and find a better place because they're out there. Okay, and then, um, uh, well, let's see. I guess the last one is just fear, fear of rejection. Of course, I think that fear, all of us, is rejection. And, and the thing I do with that is take... So, so I fear no one will buy from me today. Okay, you know, it's, it's not the end of the world. Um, all right, so I think that's it. I'm gonna wrap that up. So introverts, you just know that you're not, don't label yourself an introvert. Don't take that identity because you can be introverted in some areas and not in others. And Melissa Thatcher, uh, how do you respond to people who say your prices are too high without being rude? Um, again, I would, uh, I, how I respond, okay, I'm going to tell you how I respond. How I respond is that I say something like, oh, yes, you, our products are not for everybody. You know, I just, I just say that. Yes, our milk is not for everybody. Oh, no, I, I recognize our meat is not for everybody. Um, that's how I answer them because it's not, and, and because you don't know where they're coming from, you could get into a long conversation of, well, my products are too high compared to what? And they say Walmart or whatever. And you say, well, my products aren't in Walmart. I don't bother with that because if they're coming at, at you with that challenge in the first place, they, they're there to challenge you. They probably aren't going to be a customer. So someone who challenges me on price, I don't have the time of day for. If they're wondering from a place of curiosity, that's different. But if they say, oh, your prices are too high, I just say, oh, I, I understand our products are not for everybody. Our beef is not for everybody. So, so that's it because you're not ever going to, if, and also take that as a cue that you have not, maybe if there's someone who's been there a while, you've not done a good job of finding out what solutions you're, pro you're providing for them. And I want to read you guys something. Okay. So this is, when we teach our course, the uh, the very, you know, one of the real foundations of the course is this, and, and I'm going to read it. <laughs> uh, well, let me just read it and then we'll talk about it. All great farms solve a problem. You are a problem solver. Your goal is to provide a solution for your customers' wants, needs, desires, frustrations, and aspirations, and a solution that the person is happy, grateful, and willing to pay for. So as a farmer, when you figure out what problem you are solving and what solution you have that fulfills your customer's needs and desires and aspirations, price is not an issue. So, um, uh, was that Melissa Thatcher? I can't see. <laughs> so if someone's challenging you on price, they are not aware, you have not made them aware or they have not become aware of the solutions you provide. Uh, so that's one, one way to look at it there. When, when, People, when you make people aware of the solutions you provide, they, the price is not the first thing out of their mouth. When price is the first thing out of their mouth, I just say, you know, yes, our products are not for everybody. I totally understand. Um, okay, so I think that's it. So I gave you the, the challenge of how to get better at this. For seven days, give someone a compliment because that gives you immediate feedback and it, cha it trains you to look for um, the, something in the other person instead of shining the lights on your concerns. Number two, find out what the positive te intention is behind the feelings you're having and thank God or thank the universe for that because that's really important. 
And number three is, uh, was there a number three? <laughs> I guess that was, don't just label yourself and think it's black and white. I'm an introvert, therefore I will always be an introvert. You know, know that it's a muscle you can grow the more you practice it. And number four, practice self-care. If you're exhausted by um, communicating with people, then make sure you've built lots of downtime in to take care of that and to take care of yourself and honor that about you. All right, everyone, take care, and I will talk to you in the Facebook group.